What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. And if you think the inflation that we've seen so far this year is bad, then wait till you see what might be coming down the pipeline. Because it just got real expensive to send things across the pond, and that could spell sticker shock when we do our Christmas shopping this year. You ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. My name's Jack Gamble, and I'm nobody special. And if you've been following my channel, you've probably heard me mention the congestion at U.S. ports and the situation with the shortage of truck drivers that are causing logistical nightmares in the United States right now. Well, that is starting to translate into big-time price increases in the cost to ship things across the pond. Now, before we dive into the numbers, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell, it would really help me out. Now, let's get into the numbers. The cost to send a 40-foot container box from China to Los Angeles just broke $20,000. Now, to put that in perspective, just a week ago, on July 27th, that cost was $11,000. This $20,000 price that we're looking at, that is a 500% increase in shipping costs across the pond over the last year. 500%. The inevitable result of this is going to be price increases across the board in our stores. If it gets too expensive to move things Prices will rise commensurate with that difficulty. So what's causing these astronomical price hikes and the cost to ship things across the ocean? Well, there's actually a number of things going on, and they're all coalescing into this perfect storm of logistical chaos. And it's about to hit all of us in the wallet. Now, the first issue leading to this problem, and this is nothing new, is the United States trade deficit. In June, the U.S. trade deficit ballooned to $75.7 billion. Long story short, in the month of June, we imported $75.7 billion more stuff than we exported. In logistical terms, what does that translate to? We need more ships coming, but we don't need as many ships going. We need more boxes coming in, not as many boxes going out. That's starting to cause problems in the supply chain. Now, the situation at U.S. ports has gone from bad to worse over the last few months. And if you think I'm kidding, take a look at this map. This map shows ships sitting at anchor, waiting outside U.S. ports, burning through money, just waiting for their turn to unload their cargo. The U.S. ports cannot unload the cargo fast enough at a pace to keep up with the rate the ships are bringing it in. And that's resulting in an increase of shipping costs. Now, even if you're fortunate enough to get your cargo offloaded fast enough at U.S. ports, now you run into the problem of the shortage of U.S. truck drivers. First of all, Hats off to any of you truck drivers out there. Being a truck driver is a thankless job. All right, you are on the road away from your family weeks, months at a time, living in cramped conditions, usually in the back of your truck. You're on the highway with weekend Sunday drivers getting cut off by people in a Prius who think that your 18-wheeler can just slow down so they can change lanes. It doesn't work like that. Being a truck driver is a thankless job, and if you really factor it into hourly rates, and you count the time that these trucks spend sitting, waiting to unload, or having trouble with the loading dock at their destination or at their port, really it boils down to almost a minimum wage job. So it's not like there's a lot of guys lining up to be truck drivers right now. This means it's harder to move stuff in the U.S. Now another thing that's adding to this logistical nightmare is a shortage of cargo boxes or container boxes, these 40-foot rectangles. It's not that there aren't enough of them, there's plenty of them in the world, and China is building them as fast as they can. The problem is they're piling up where we don't need them, and it costs money to move them whether they're empty or not. And if you're already having a hard time moving loaded boxes across the ocean and onto trucks, then you can imagine how hard it is to move empty boxes back to China. Because we've got all of these depots inland in the United States, where if you're lucky enough to get your cargo across the pond and offload it on our ports and load it onto a truck and to arrive at its final destination, now how do you get that empty box back to China to reload it? Well, same problems. You need a truck driver. Don't have a lot of those. You need to put it on the truck. You need to pay to move it empty across the U.S. to get it to a port where hopefully you can get it on a boat, and then hopefully you can get it back over to China where they can reload it. So you can see how these trade imbalances and this surge in demand for goods is really causing the supply chain to break down. Now, another thing that's causing this, and I've talked about this a lot, 
has been Jay Powell over at the Fed and his printing press going burr. One thing that we've done differently with the COVID stimulus than we did the last time around is we have sent that money out to people instead of just dumping it in the banking system. They've also dumped it into the banking system with their mortgage-backed securities and bond purchases. But in the form of stimulus and the child care tax credit, it's money raining down all over the place. And people are picking up that money and they're spending it right away. And that's causing a massive surge in demand for stuff. And Americans are ordering stuff at a pace like never before seen. So we've got massive amounts of stuff flowing into the country, not much flowing back, a shortage of truck drivers, a shortage of boxes. The supply chain is not built to handle the current load. So now that we know what's going on, how do we get out of this mess? Well, unfortunately, there's not really an easy way. Short of a sudden massive drop in U.S. consumer demand for goods, there's no easy way out of this. It takes a lot of time to build ships, and there are a lot of ships being built, but that takes years. It takes a lot of time to upgrade ports and to add capacity at ports. That takes years. It takes time to train truck drivers. It costs money to recruit truck drivers and to entice more people to become truck drivers. So there's no cheap or easy way out of this mess unless U.S. consumer spending grinds to a halt. And at the rate money is being printed and at the rate the stimmy checks are coming out to people, we can't really expect any major slowdown in U.S. consumer spending anytime soon. So what does this mean? This means stuff is going to keep getting more expensive. If your shipping costs go up, the final cost that you charge your consumer has to go up. And as it gets more and more expensive to move things across the pond and to move things once they get here and to send the empty boxes back, that's going to translate to sticker shock on the shelves. And I think that's going to come to a head in December and November when we go out and do our Christmas shopping. I think we're not going to find the deals we're used to finding. Or worse, we might find bare shelves in a lot of places. So how might you invest this trend? Well, I can tell you what I did. See, back in December, I had the good fortune of seeing this video over at a channel called Heresy Financial by a guy named Joe Brown. That is an excellent channel. I highly recommend you check it out and subscribe. I'll put a link down in the description below. And Joe was ahead of the curve. He spotted this trend back in December. Like I always do, I don't trade based on what I see on YouTube. I started doing some of my own research and some of my own DD, and I, it turned out I was able to verify everything Joe Brown was saying in that video. So I went looking to invest in a shipping carrier, basically the companies that are shipping across the pond because they've seen the biggest surge in their earnings. And I found a company called Deneos, ticker D-A-C. All right, so here we are looking at Deneos uh, real quick. I have to throw this out there. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Don't touch a trade based on what you hear from me. I'm nobody special. I want you to do your own DD, your own research, and arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. That being said, let's look at what I did and how I traded this. So Deneos is a shipping carrier. And I remember I made this trade back in December after I did some of my own DD based on what I heard from Joe Brown. And at the time, if we go back to a one-year chart, when I bought back here around in December, at the time, Deneos had already essentially tripled from its low, almost quadrupled. So it was a tough buy for me to buy a stock that had recently quadrupled. Um, but I ended up buying it in the 20s because the PE at the time was very low. That's your price to earnings ratio. And if you look here, even after this magnificent run that Deneos has had all year long, we're still looking at a PE of 2. All right. I mean, the average stock in the S&P 500 is trading at a P.E. around 21, 22 right now, I think. So this stock is trading at a multiple of two. So this is a incredibly undervalued stock using those metrics. Now, shipping carriers almost always trade at lower P.E.s. So don't expect this to have a trade at, at a P.E. of 20. These are always going to trade at low P.E.s. But suffice it to say, even after this run, this is still a very cheap stock. Now, looking at the chart, so what I did, I bought in the 20s, and I sold about two-thirds of my shares in the high 60s. Now, I had more than tripled my investment at that point, so I took one-third of my investment out in cash, and I set it aside. So now I am playing with the house's money. I still have one-third of my shares, and with the remaining third, or half of the profits that I took, I bought call options. And the stock continued to run a few more dollars, and I sold those call options as the stock continually ran. Now I'm out of those calls, and I just am left with my one-third position. 
Now, the stock has had a nice little pullback here. And this purple line here, this is your 50-day simple moving average. And the red line down there is your 200-day. Now, looking at this chart, I think we may have an opportunity to buy this stock at a lower price. Um, again, I'm, I'm not advertising my long here. Do your own research. Um, but what I saw is, you know, we, we traded most of the year. We kept bouncing off of this 50-day moving average line. But then we broke down last month below it. And if you see, we came back up, we retook the 50 line, but we retested and failed again. And then we've come up a couple of times since then, and we've consistently failed to maintain above this 50-day moving average. Now, here we are today. We had a good earnings report earlier this week, and here we are today just above our 50-day line. What I would like to see is I would like to see this trade above its 50-day line and then come back and retest like we did here, but I want to see that 50 day line hold before I add to my position. And I do want to add to my position here because with these rates, they're still going up. And as we discussed, there's really no end in sight to this situation. So I think this is still a good story. I think this investment thesis is intact. Now, if we continue to fail to retake this 50 day line, then look out below. In that case, this thing is going to start pulling back. And after a run like this, looking at this one year chart, after a run like this, a significant pullback could bring us all the way down around this 200-day line. Again, I'm holding off right now. I'm not touching this trade just yet. I still have one-third of my original position in play, but I want to see it retest and hold this 50-day moving average before I buy any more shares. That being said, this company, despite this run, is still an undervalued company in my book. And if this 50-day line holds, then we're going to be heading to new highs. If this situation in shipping keeps getting worse, as I think it will, I could easily see this trading in the hundreds. Again, that's just my thesis. That's just what I plan to do and what I'm looking at. I want you to do your own research and your own DD. Now, this is just one company, one shipping carrier that I've been trading this year. If you guys think of another way to invest this trend, I would love to hear about it. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to look into it. I'll research it myself, and maybe I'll even have material to do a new video on. So let me know your thoughts. Do you think there's something better than Deneos out there? Like I said, I'd love to hear it. So long story short, the trade imbalances and the surge in consumer spending caused by the pandemic and the loose monetary policy is really straining the supply chain. It's straining the logistics system around the world. It's not built to handle this kind of flow. And something is going to give, either prices are going to increase or the supply chain is just going to grind to a halt. And if consumer demand doesn't slow down drastically anytime soon, we're going to see price increases at the store. And it's going to take years to build out the infrastructure necessary to handle this kind of flow. Guys, I want to thank you for your time and for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. It would really help me out. In the meantime, live small and dream big.